this video we're going to examine different ways that we can forecast for seasonal data and then I'm going to introduce the whole winter's formulas. Okay, um, so two possible methods um, that I recommend for seasonal data. Uh, one, what's called the Holt Winters method, and two, linear regression with dummy variables for the seasons. We'll talk a lot more about that later. Okay, so talking about Holt Winters method first. So it's an extrapolation method um, where you use the data itself to forecast future data. So there's a simplicity again to extrapolation methods. You just need the data itself, no other data. Very simple to collect the data then. You don't have to collect a whole bunch of other x variables as well. Uh, the downside is that uh, extrapolation methods, uh, as we saw in previous videos, don't handle drastically changed situations very well. So if there's anything uh, like some major world event that happens, um, your data set might become, um, might drastically change and this extrapolation method won't be able to handle that change um, or forecast into the future what future data would really look like then. Um, <clears throat> and uh, Holt Winters method is an exponential smoothing method, just like the SES and the Holtz methods are. Okay, so let's have a look at the Holt Winters method. The formulas are quite similar to the Holtz and the SES. Um, what you need to do as well, same thing as before, you need to get your initial values. So your uh, seasonal factors, now you get them for the entire first year. We'll talk more about that later. And then um, we get the initial level and the initial trend after the first year. Again, we'll talk more about that later. Um, so let's look at if we had quarterly data. What would our initial values look like? Okay, so our seasonal um, initial values, S1 through S4, this will give us the first four quarters of seasonal factors where you take your actual y value for each of those time periods or quarters divide by the average of all the y values for that year. That will get you the size of your actual data compared to the average. So how much higher is it? So let's say um, here I'm just kind of doing a mock data set for uh, house sales. House sales are very high in the spring, very high in the fall, a little bit lower in the summer, quite low in the winter. So um, if we were comparing our sales for each quarter here or each season to uh, the average, um, the seasonal factor, let's say for the spring would be very high. Um, the seasonal factor for uh, the winter here would be very low. Um, so basically what it tells you is a percentage that your, your um, data in that quarter is, uh, a percentage that it is compared to the um, average that makes any sense. We'll look at it more when we do an actual Holtz method on data in Excel. Um, okay, so again, those are our initial seasonal factors. For quarterly data, we do four of them, uh, and we divide by the average for the first four quarters for the actual data. Um, okay, and then our initial level actually starts in time period five. Why time period five? Well, what we do is we use the first year to get our seasonal factors, and then we start our initial level at one time period after that first year. Okay, um, S here is our seasonal factor, Y is our actual data, L is our level. Um, okay, T is our trend. So same thing as um, the level, we started at time period five. So um, one year plus one time period again. And here is the formula for it. So we're trying to figure out whether there's an upward or downward trend. Notice what we're doing right here and right here. We're doing what's called de-seasonalizing the data. So this is uh, very useful to know. So what you do to de-seasonalize data, you take your actual data and you divide by your seasonal factor. So your seasonal factor is like your percentage that that um, time period is of the usual or of the average. So let's say spring is much higher. So maybe your sales are 150% of the yearly average and maybe in the winter they're 50% of the yearly average. So those seasonal factors allow for that. And when you divide by that seasonal factor or you seasonally adjust, you'll see that on graphs uh, is a little asterisk. When you look at actual data sets online, it'll say seasonally adjusted. What they've done is they've divided by these seasonal factors to strip off these big oscillations in your data and just leave you with what would be the trend overall afterwards. Uh, again, we'll talk more about all of this when we get into an actual data uh, set in Excel. Okay, moving on to our initial values for monthly data, very similar, but now we go and average to 12 for each. So if we want to represent the whole first year, we need to use all 12 months of the year. Uh, remember quarterly data 
there are four periods in the year. Monthly, there are 12. So we do season one, or sorry, seasonal factor one all the way through 12. Uh, those are initial seasonal factors. And then our level starts at time period 13. Well, why is that? Again, because it's one year plus one time period. So 12 months plus one. Um, and I'm so sorry, one. There we go, a little tiny typo, just got rid of it there. So um, our level is um, 13, so Y13 over S1. Now S1, because these two are in the same month, that will make more sense when we get into the Excel version of this. Okay, uh, and then trend 13 is Y13 over S1, Y12 over S2. So we're again deseasonalizing each of our actual data values by dividing by the seasonal factors and then comparing them to get that upward trend. Okay, so here again are our initial seasonal factors, here's our initial level, here is our initial trend. Okay, and finally we're ready to actually talk about the um, equations for the rest of the data set. So uh, you need to get those initial values plus one more row of equations and then you can copy down the whole way down. Uh, here's our level formula, uh, quite similar to Holtz, our trend, um, our seasonal, our forecast within our data sets we're just when we're just going one time period ahead well make sense of this also you have to be so careful um, that you're comparing like to like so let's say you have um, monthly data if you want to forecast let's say for January go look at the previous January that's what that minus M is so M is actually your number of periods in the year um, okay Okay, so again, if uh, we have quarterly data, then M is 4. If we have monthly data, M is 12. Um, and now if we want to forecast beyond our data set, um, then we use this formula where K is our number of time periods ahead that we forecast. So same as the Holtz method. Um, so forecasting kind of beyond your actual data when you're going beyond what you have for data, um, then you use this K where K is your number of periods beyond your last calculated level and trend that you want to forecast. Okay, and let's go try this method in Excel in our next video.